Shalom, giving honor and praise to Yah, the creator and the maker of heaven and earth. My name is Yeshaya Yisrael, also known as Kashub the Danite. Not going to be long, but we want to touch on the subject that has come up among Israelites, among black people, you know what I mean? As far as it goes down in certain cases and certain examples. What we want to deal with is the aspect of vegetarianism and veganism. Now, let me state emphatically that there is no Hebrew word for vegetarian, no more than there's a Hebrew word for messianic. Um, these terminologies are things that people have made up for their own examples in their own self. It's a self-righteous claim. It's a self-appointed name. Um, it's something that was self-made and something that was self-appointed. Now, if we are saying that we are the children of Israel, and this is going out to the house of Israel, um, and we're going to say that we're dealing with this book, whole or in part. And what I mean by that is whether or not you're saying you're only Old Testament based or so-called messianic by dealing what they call old and new. Let's go to Isaiah 41 verse 8. And by the way, I want you to call an Old Testament brother. But thou, Yisrael, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So this right here tells you that Abraham was a friend of the Most High. If you understand this to be the words of the Most High. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 51, verse 1. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek Yah. Look unto the rock which you were hewn, and to the hole of the pit which you were digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bore you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. Let's go down to verse 7 of Isaiah 51. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. So now when they want to come and call you a carnivore or another name outside of the name of being a son of the Most High of the nation of Israel, it says what? Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. So if they not come in according to this word in this book, there is no light in them when you go to Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20. So you can see exactly what that is talking about. Archaeologists use the scriptures to validate a point. Health nut professionals use the scriptures to validate a point. But just like no disrespect intended, those who are saying, well, they are beyond being Israelite, they are a messianic, they have created their own form of righteousness. This says, hearken to me, ye that know righteousness, not make up your own self-righteousness in your own self-proclaimed righteousness name. That's something we want to point out for reason and purposes. So let's remember, it said Abraham his friend, right? Let's go, we will, brothers and sisters, to the book of Genesis chapter 18 verse 7 all right we are in Genesis 18 verse 7 so we can gain an understanding of what we're talking about and it says the following and Abraham ran the same righteous one right it says and Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he hastened to dress it and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat do you know who this day was the messages of the most high god these were not ordinary men that you see in genesis chapter 18 and it says they did what and Abraham fetched a calf which is flesh which is meat and they ate they ate the calf that Abraham sat there and gave them this is the same righteous Abraham and the men of the Most High that you see were messengers who were sent to him to say, we are here to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and, which is another part when you go to Genesis chapter 19. In Genesis 18, these were the same ones who were sent to tell Abraham a message about he having a son. So we see messengers of the Most High who ate meat. So what book are these vegetarians and vegans who are also in the knowledge of being Israel using? So for your reference purposes, Genesis chapter 18, verse 7 and verse 8, so we can gain an understanding. All right, let's go to Genesis 27, verse 9, so we can gain an understanding of what we're talking about. 
Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, which is flesh. And I will make them savory meat for your father, such as he loveth. Now, this is when Rebekah was telling Jacob to go and get a, two kids of the goats and he will bring them to his mother and his mother will make it for his father such as he loves. So are you more righteous than Isaac? Are you more righteous than Abraham? Are you more righteous than the men who were appearing before Abraham? No, but you got your own self-proclaimed righteousness. So when you got your own self-proclaimed righteousness, that's your own stumbling block that you have set before yourself. So we want to be able to explain what that's talking about. All right, let's go to the law of the Most High God. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. So we can see and gain an understanding of what we're talking about, right? And it says the following right here. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. All right? And it reads as follows. And Yah spoke unto Moshe and to Aharon, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts, which are flesh, which you shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven footed and chew of the cud, among the beasts that shall you eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. Let's jump to verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, Yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean unto you. Now, let's go to verse 8. Of their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcass you shall not touch. They are unclean unto you. The Hebrew word for unclean is tame. The Hebrew word for clean is tahor. So we want to explain what that is talking about in that particular regard. Now, let's go, if we will, to Leviticus 26. Pardon me, Leviticus 11, verse 26. Pardon me. The carcasses of every beast which divideth the hoof and is not cloven footed, nor cheweth the cud, are unclean unto you. Everyone that toucheth them shall be unclean. Period. So, as far as your, your pigs are going, when you touch the carcass of that, it's just not unclean to the even. It says you shall be unclean. Period. All right. Then it goes on to verse 27. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws, among all manner of beasts that go on all four, your lions, your wolves, your dogs, your cats, all right? Those are unclean unto you. Whosoever toucheth their carcass shall be unclean unto the even. So you see the difference between the pig and its uncleanness in verse 26? And in verse 27, one says to the even. This one just says unclean, period. So you can't say in Israel, we're going to eat pork and uh, we'll just only be unclean to the even. No. That doesn't work like that. So we want to point that out for reason and purposes. There are laws, statutes, and commandments and ordinances on how things were to be done and how things operate. All right? So let's understand that for reason and purposes. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. So we can gain an understanding of the law of the Most High. And it says this. And Yah, the same one who spoke in Leviticus, and Yah spoke unto Moshe, the same Moshe who was spoken to in Leviticus, and to Aaron, the same Aaron who was spoken to in Leviticus, in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first of the it shall be the first month of the year to you. That means they already knew about the month of Abib. The Most High was giving them here a calendar. Let's remember that first part. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Yisrael, of whom many of us claiming we are descended from, and thus are in ancestry, and having children, giving our children Hebrew names, saying, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a household. And if the household be too little for the lamb, which is flesh, let him and his neighbor next unto him take it the lamb according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall you make your count for the lamb. Now the word lamb between verse 
three and four is mentioned four times. You see it? Let's go on one more time in verse three. Speak ye unto all, not just, oh, well, I choose to be a vegetarian. I'm a vegan. Thus saith the Most High, speak ye unto all the congregation of Yisrael, saying, not unto, we're going to go in, the people who came from Noah, or we're going to go in, brothers and sisters. Oh, the people in the, the Genesis diet. This is what the Most High God said this here. If you believe you're an Israelite and of the Torah, because I know you're not going to do Deuteronomy 28 to say that fell upon us and think that there's a different Yah than the one who spoke in Exodus. All right, so here we go. Speaking unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day of this month, you, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a household. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls every man according to his eating shall you make your count for the lamb so you see it four times between verse three and verse four so it's not as some people may try to say well it says uh, according to the number of the souls every man according to his eating in other words some people are saying according to what you eat that's not what the torah here is saying so oh yeah you're saying to be coming with um anger and you're saying to be coming no because you're teaching against the word of the most high because see when more yeshaya speaks against the kemet people when they got the penises on the wall everybody in the camp applauds it when more yeshaya speaks against the aspect of saying that the hebrew we speak in is yiddish everybody after the service compliments me so it's the same same spirit you're going to come with and even harder with those who know better when you talk to the knucklehead child in the street do you come with the same passion as you do your own child who should know better you're going to come even harder at your children what did the most i say of all the families of the earth he knew israel so israel shall pay for all their sins you got a special relationship with the most high when you know yourself as yisrael so we want to sit there and come like that. So there are people say, oh, you're, you're coming loud and you're, you're speaking with this and you're moving your hands and you're... That's what we do. We teach it. You understand? When parents are talking to their children, they move their hands. When people are trying to convey a thought, they're going to sit there and get into the mode of it. Now, if you don't like what I'm saying, stop the video. We're going to move on regardless. It says this according to the book here. And if the household be too little for the lamb, that's mentioned one time right there, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. So if you got a whole lamb, but you got three people in your household, that's too big of a lamb for three people. So you're going to sit there and have another three family household, and then y'all as six people can have one lamb, to give an example. That's what that's talking about, right? It says, every man according to his eating. So if you look right here, right? He shall take it, every man according to the house of their fathers. According to the house of their fathers. Speak to all the congregation of Israel according to the house of their fathers. You don't have a choice to be a vegan in the house of Israel. Not throughout the whole entire year, you don't. You don't have a choice to be a vegetarian in the house of Israel. Not through the whole entire year. So you know what vegetarians who know themselves as Israelites say? Never shown in the scriptures does say it's Yah. Well, you know, um, Exodus diet is when the people, you know, were being demoted and their things were falling down. No, it says this. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. The Most High is instituting something here. You understand? So we want to point this out. So I think I made the point driven home about the aspect of the lamb. Or shall make your account for the lamb. So you don't have a choice with that one. Your personal choice of wanting to be a vegetarian or a vegan does not supersede the law of the Most High. We want to sit there and make this point to be noted and, and factually understood. Let's go if you will. All right, so we can gain an understanding of what we're talking about. Leviticus chapter 11. This is important. Back to Leviticus 11 verse 44. And it says this, For I am the Lord thy God, you shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself with any man of creeper thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am Yah that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. So we already read about the Exodus in the Lamb. 
So the Mosai is saying what? For I am the Lord that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt. Egypt, we understand in other videos is Mizraya, meaning straits. You was brought out of the, being in a strait or in captivity. Out of bondage. The house of bondage was Egypt. So we already see that. So we want to point that out for reason and purposes. All right? To be your God. The Most High brought you out of Egypt to be your God. All right? Your power, your Elohim. You shall therefore be holy for I am holy. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth upon pardon me, that move in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Vegetarians seem to, in some cases, not make a distinction between the clean and the unclean. You see the difference right here? To make a difference between the unclean and the clean, saith the most high who brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. We already went over in the book, Blessed Be the Most High, that I wrote entitled Egypt Talking Writing, the external references about Israelites leaving out of Egypt. Oh, Maury Shire shows a lot of external references. No, we're going to do a straight book right here. I ain't going into no um, parchment that they have of ancient Israel. We ain't going to go into no papyrus that, shows, that speaks... Um, Complement in the scriptures. No, we're going to deal with the scriptures just to find the scriptures because you got people out there teaching things that are against the scriptures. That's why we want this to be noted and for edification purposes. Nothing that the Father gave you hurts you in His law. The Most High only hurt the people when they were not keeping the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. Your personal findings and your own knowledge that you found, oh, I found this out in health, does not supersede the law of the Most High God. We are known as human beings. We are part water in our makeup and we are part flesh in our makeup. Why will it be wise to not have any flesh in your diet when you are already partly flesh? The reason why they say you should drink eight glasses of water or so a day is to replenish the water that you have when you urine, to replenish the water that you have when you sweat, to replenish the water that your body already gets rid of as it uses it throughout the day. Just like your car use gas, your body use water. So we want to let that be noted for edification purposes. There is no Hebrew word for vegetarian, but there is a Hebrew word for clean and unclean. So we want to show this here to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. So if you're talking about the laws and statutes and commandments and you're not making a difference between clean and unclean, we got a problem. Let's go to Genesis chapter 9 so we can gain an understanding of what we're talking about. Remember clean and unclean, right? Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1. And it says the following. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, which we know in Hebrew means fill the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, and upon all that move upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. But the flesh, with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, ye shall not eat. So I want this to be noted. The argument given to some people is that Noah was eating clean and unclean, or so forth and so on but that's not accurate it says what every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you even as the green herb which I've given you all things so green herbs are clean to eat yes or no yes so obviously Noah already understood in gaining understanding oh okay if you're comparing what I'm to eat of everything that moves to something that is clean for me to eat obviously I'm eating that which is already clean because remember it says sanctify yourselves and be holy but when you're not making a distinction between clean and unclean you don't care what holiness is so we're going to show where Noah knew about before the flood before he actually made the ark about clean and unclean all right you would be amazed the kind of conversations that Israelites done sat there and discussed we are in Genesis chapter 6 verse 19 of Every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. So the two of every sort, the sort is the Hebrew word mean, which means of the, your sex, or your gender. So two of every sort. So there's one sort which is male, the other sort which is female. And it says they shall be one 
and two, male and female. So that's what it's talking about. Now let's go to Genesis chapter seven, verse two. Of every clean beast, thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, meaning one sort or one gender or one sex is male and his female, that is the two. Okay, then it says, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Some people say in Genesis 6, 19 and Genesis chapter 7, verse 2 is a contradiction because it says, um, uh, it says two and then it says seven and two. No, faggot, no dyke, no person who lacks understanding of clean and unclean. It is talking about Genesis chapter 6, verse 19, and it says they shall be. So the sort, which is the mean or the gender in the Hebraic understanding, they shall be male and female. Then in Genesis chapter 7, verse 2, but when you don't have a distinction between clean and unclean, you ain't got no kind of holiness toward the most high, of course you can't see the word. The Apocrypha teaches you that wisdom will not enter a soul that's subject to sin. So when you're trying to talk to some brother and sister, I just can't get it. She got maybe too much spirits in her, maybe too many people that entered her. Maybe he done enter too many people. Certain things just block certain kinds of vision. We want to point this out. And it says, of every clean beast, thou shalt take to thee by sevens. So they already knew what clean, right? And of the beasts that are not clean. See, clean and not clean. So we already know and understand what this is talking about. Don't, no one knew what clean and unclean was beforehand. But the vegetarian and the vegan world, y'all ain't going to be able to stand up and to get the light of the Torah. You understand what I mean? So we just want to point that out for reason and purposes and so forth and so on. So in closing out, I right, want to go over something one more time. You're going to go back to Exodus chapter 12. All right. And we're going to start once again in verse four. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it, which is the lamb, according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall you make your count for the lamb. Every man, according to his eating, does it mean according to your own individualized vegetarian diet. That's not what this is justifying. But wisdom will not enter a soul that is subject to sin. You are taken away from the word of the most high by trying to sit there and insert your own individual choice of being a vegetarian or a vegan and then trying to mix it with the culture of Israel. We've shown where Abraham ate meat. We've shown when Yitzchak ate meat, which is Abraham and Isaac. Those men were deemed to be righteous. You understand? And so now Dawid or David did eat meat when they had the feast. So David's sin in committing adultery wasn't hidden in the scriptures. The Most High said, you did this in secret, but he would do it in front of the light of everyone. So everybody get to see what happened. My point in mentioning that, and it's not saying I'm nowhere near on the level of the righteousness of David himself. I am presenting the fact and the aspect, brothers and sisters and elders included, is the fact that you cannot sit there and justify a vegetarian or a vegan diet yearly inside the house of Israel. If you choose to not eat meat because it's unhealthy in this society, because of what they do with the animals, such as bestiality, that's understandable. But because we don't have our own farms, and many of us are too lazy to even get our own farms, because when Israelite brothers and sisters try to promote getting land and crops and everything like that, we're so used to staying in our houses and our bedrooms and our apartments and going to these jobs back and forth, we don't see where we can even, in the land of our captivity, still have a clean animal for our own self. Our lack of land and our lack of responsibility to even gain something does not justify you being a vegetarian still in the laws of the Most High. It says what in the house of Yisrael? If you're going to sit there and deal with meat, you let the blood drain on the ground as water. You cut the fat off. There are certain requirements that go along with it. So if you feel you're just going to run shod past all that and just be a vegetarian for every day of the year in the house of Israel because you lack the requirements to properly deal with meat in this captivity, that doesn't make you justified. Your lack of preparation and your lack of resources does not justify your personal health choice in the light of the Torah. Shalom.